It is our great pleasure to welcome each of you to our budget hearing. I'll start off by setting just a few ground rules. We look forward to hearing from each of you. You'll note in front of me is a timer. Green means go, yellow means complete your thought, and red means complete your sentence. Each person will have three minutes to address the board. I ask that during that three minutes while each person is talking, that we keep the noise level to a very respectful level so that we make sure that we hear from each of you. We will make sure that we hear from every single person who has signed up to speak tonight will have the opportunity to be heard by this board. We will do our best to honor your time. I see that some individuals have signs. You're welcome to bring those up and when you address the board. If someone else has said what you were thinking or what you had planned to say, it's perfectly okay to stand up and say, well, I agree with what this person said and not necessarily repeat it if you don't um, wish to do so. So you all will have our undivided attention. We look forward to hearing from each of you. I'm going to call several names in a row. So once I call your name, we have some empty seats here in the front row. Just be mindful that when I call your name that you're ready to come forward. The first name that is signed up, Cassandra Brooks, who will be followed by Patricia Ruppert, who will then be followed by Mary McLeod. Ms. Brooks. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for your time. My name is Cassandra Brooks, and I'm the Executive Director for Little Believers Academy. Today I have my NC Pre-K teacher here with me, Ms. Um, Tammy Taylor, my assistant, Ms. Wanda Dixon, and one of our wonderful grandmothers, Ms. McLeod. So I'm asking for your continued local funding for NC Pre-K. Pre this is important to me and the children in my community because I see the potential in every child and they deserve an opportunity to achieve greatness despite challenges in their life. They depend on me for, and you for the educational opportunities that will determine their quality of life. I represent 65 childcare sites across Wake County that offer NC Pre-K. We are a proud group of directors and educators because we run a program ranked number one nationally for curriculum excellence. We know that this is a game changer for a child's educational future. Commissioners, the children we serve need a game changing experience to compete in today's world and we provide it. 95% of our graduates meet the benchmark for being kindergarten ready using early literacy measures. We know what works and we want to give it to every child. When I think about a child and a family being scared and confused and, and able to fully participate in learning, it breaks my heart. So I ask that, and thank you for your continue to provide local funding to help develop the next scientists who will develop a cure for HIV and cancer that plagues our community. Continue providing local funding to develop the next engineer who will solve complex issues in our community. Continue providing local funding to develop the next educator who will meet our next group of students to achieve their highest level of success. Together, we are game changers for our vulnerable children in need. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rupert. My name is Trisha Rupert, and I am a parent representative serving on the board of directors on Wake County Smart Start. I'm also a substitute teacher for Wake County. I'm here because I've experienced firsthand how it is not only critical but essential to receive early support. And I've unfortunately have seen with my own eyes what happens for children without it. 
As a parent with a child with special needs, I speak for all parents that depend on a system that is ready to help when a child needs it. As a substitute teacher, I can speak to my own experience in trying to manage a class, especially the younger grades, where the differences of who have had preschool and those who have not is quite evident. It's not about where they are academically. You can notice it in their demeanor and their confidence level. As a parent of a son with autism, who's now a thriving sixth grader, I will be forever grateful for the support I found for him. He was in early intervention at 18 months, AU preschool services for two years, and then a Title I pre-K. They told me all along, he, cognitively, he was there. Socially, he was not. That last year in that Title I pre-K was his missing piece. I bring this up because that socializing is it only important for him, it's important for all children. Social and emotional development is it critical for children, and this is what preschool teaches them. Preschool teaches children emotional communication, physical and intellectual skills that are vital and which leads to success in kindergarten. North Carolina Pre-K also identifies learning needs, and I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for, the, for us to get to these needs early and address them before they enter the school system. I know for my son, he would not be where he is today if he didn't have that. When I was a long-term sub this fall in kindergarten, I've, I experienced firsthand how academically rigorous kindergarten is, so different than from my generation. The kids who had no pre-K stood out. They were certainly left at the gates because from those moments they walked through the doors, they needed to be ready to learn. To watch a child's insecurities as they looked around at all their peers was academically was heartbreaking. As a board member, I've seen the research that says extremely challenging for teachers to bridge that gap. That first year in school is so vital into planting the seeds on how that child will grow and flourish throughout their education. To see that light dim in a child and ultimately change their path puts a heaviness inside your heart. I can promise you that maybe they will not remember everything about their preschool experience, but commissioners, I can promise you that the foundation for success that pre-K provides a child will stay with them for many years. Please continue to support pre-K services and early interventions, and for all the families seeking brighter futures for their children. Thank you. Ms. McLeod, then Angie Welch. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to talk uh, about pre-K. My name is Miriam McLeod, and I'm a grandmother, and I'm a proud grandmother. My grandson, Micaiah Harris, attends Little Believers Academy. And I just have to say that I was really just blown away with the things that he has learned and gone through for this year at, at that school. He's a twin and he was born premature and we thought that maybe he may be a little slow in some areas, but just being at Little, uh, little Believers has really just brought help out. They studied so much stuff. I mean, he's gotten in the habit of what I call homework because his teacher gives him, gives them a sheet each month that they have to learn sight words and practice holding the pencil and writing. And it is just amazing when we go somewhere and he say, hey, that's a sight word, that's a sight word. And he'll, we go, <laughs> we have to pick up my granddaughter at night and I'll take him with me. And he's steady calling out the ABCs, the numbers, the letters. And that's just amazing to me because I thought all grandparents are proud of their children and grandchildren. And it's been a long time since I've been in the school system because my, my children are grown. But to have this grandson that I'm interacting with, sometimes um, he'll look at uh, Dora or some of these other programs, and I was thinking, oh gosh, he's singing his ABCs and he knows his numbers. But until he went to Little Believers, I realized that he was memorizing a lot of stuff he saw on TV, but when Miss Tammy, the teacher, was teaching them their ABCs, 
that showed me that he didn't know what he was seeing on TV, but he was actually taking time in the classroom to learn those ABCs, that he could say them and not see them. He took time to learn different words and the letters and to write his, and sometimes we had problems with him wanting to write at night, but just the encouragement that Miss Tammy gave him, the field trips that they went on, just the things that, that the school did, the teaching of them being a team, not one on one, but you know, you work together to do things. The field trips that they went on learning about insects and all, all kind, I can't even mention everything that they've done. It's just been amazing to me that a teacher can take time to learn a child all this stuff and you've got more than one child in there. So I just wanted to say thank you to Little Believers, but I want to say thank you to you because you helped to fund this. And I know we have a lot of proud parents and a lot of proud grandparents in here, but when your child has the opportunity to learn and you see what they're learning, that really makes you proud. And I'm really proud of Little Believers. And I ask that you continue to fund pre-K because not only for my grandson, but for everybody else's children and grandchildren, you know, that's a wonderful thing. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Angie Welsh. I'm the current board chair for Wake County Smart Start. And I think you've already heard the most powerful case for this investment that you have made. And we thank you very much for it. You're the critical link for us to maintain our services to 1,650 children in Wake County. And without your dollars, we serve fewer kids and we fall behind. I know as funders of Wake County Public Schools, you want a strong return on that investment. Here's what we know. By investing in NC Pre-K, you increase the odds for success in school, for graduation for our students, and for a ready workforce after graduation. We want to hand off our pre-K kids with the skills they need so our school system and the children it serves flourish. The best bet for K through 12 success starts before K through 12. So commissioners continue to be our champions, be the connectors and help the Wake County kids who need it most become the best they can possibly be. Thank you. Renee Siegel followed by Kristen Beller, and then Dr. James Smith. Hi, I'm Renee Seckel, and I'm the parent of three kids in the Wake County Public School Systems, and I'm here to urge you to fully fund the Wake County School Systems budget request. The third year, I've stood up in front of you all and asked the same question, and I appreciate how much each and every one of you has done. I've watched how you are committed to our kids, to the people of Wake County, and to our schools. And I appreciate that. You've done a lot, but it's time to do more. <laughs> um, I'm also active in our PTA, and I'm the Board Advisory Council representative to our school board. And over the last two years, I've attended meeting after meeting, and I hear the concerns, the real fear in the voices of our school board representatives is they talk about what's gonna get cut this year because pressures from the state and the funding, however much you're giving, that's not completely adequate to the needs of the school systems is hurting. This year, the Wake County uh, budget is, forgive me, I'm doing this on the fly and I'm not so great at that. <laughs> this year, the budget requests $48 million more than last year. $20 million of that, more or less, is just a straight pass on of requirements imposed by the outside. It's not something that our, our school system has any control over. The money has to be spent whether you provide it or not. So every penny of that money isn't going to make our schools better. It's just going to stay above water. Another $8 million goes to open schools that are already built. That too is money that must be spent. Two million more is to start digging out of the very deep hole of maintenance needs that our state, or that our county has let pile up as we tried to keep up with the growth. Growth has slowed down now, which is actually really great. It provides a breather, 
but our schools, every single one of them has lost more capacity than they gained because of the class size law that the General Assembly passed. This past election, the voters of Wake County could not have been more clear that we support our public schools and that we want a commission that supports our public schools to the fullest possible extent. So I'm here to ask you to please, please, please do that. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners, Mr. Ellis and staff. Um, my name is Kristen Beller. I'm the president of Wake NCAE. And I come to you today first to say thank you um, for a budget proposal that comes much closer to meeting the school board's request than last year. I also commend our district's move to reduce their spending by over $15 million prior to bringing the, their proposal to the county. Because of that, uh, what has been presented appears to be a very tight, lean budget with little, little wiggle room for further cuts. And in fact, just as Renee said, uh, nearly $20 million of their proposal is for unfunded legislative ma mandates. Uh, this year, our message at both the local and the state level is that we are all so much stronger when we invest in our public schools. When we provide funding for school nurses, counselors, social workers, and psychologists, we produce strong students prepared to engage successfully in our communities. And when we provide funding for healthier buildings and fix issues that have been deferred for many years, we have strong schools for those students to learn in. When we raise the minimum wage for our lowest paid employees and prioritize showing their, the value of our non-certified staff, we provide strong community support for our students too. And But we know that a strong community, although it includes strong schools, is not just strong schools. It also means access to emergency medical care. It means strong supportive networks for children transitioning between homes and families. It means supporting measures for food security for our folks and ensuring healthy and safe homes and buildings throughout our county. This afternoon, we heard from quite a few speakers who shared that they moved here for a wonderful for our wonderful and affordable quality of life. And as our county grows, I, as a homeowning taxpayer, ask that you continue to provide these high quality services and I'm willing to pay for them. I have lived in Wake County for, for almost 40 years. And as I have watched the benefits of our community increase with our increased investment, I cannot imagine that my fellow citizens are really okay saying, I came here to benefit from the great schools, access to quality and responsive medical care, amazing libraries, and an overall wonderful quality of life, but I'm not willing to invest in continuing these key pieces of our community for others. I enthusiastically ask you tonight, enthusiastically, to increase my taxes to seven cents, a fraction of a cent more than... a fraction of a cent more than what has been proposed in order to continue our investment and end our access to strong schools and strong communities. Thank you. Dr. James Smith, followed by Ying Zhang. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Thank you all for your support. Um, here as your Wake County Human Services Chair uh, to support the recommendations from our county manager. Uh, the 14 positions for child welfare are drastically needed. Uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, address the concerns uh, of these poor kids and what they're going through as the families uh, uh, come apart uh, due to economic issues, substance abuse, and other impacted uh, 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 areas that affect uh, families in general. Uh, the, the additional staff uh, of 6.5 uh, positions uh, for food and nutrition uh, so that we can uh, get these uh, families the, the help they need in a timely manner and to meet the state mandates. Uh, uh, we know that the U.S. commissioners have been very helpful uh, in helping us become the healthiest capital uh, 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 city and uh, county in the nation. Uh, and we're going to continue to grow uh, uh, and we need your support. I want to thank you all for what you do and let's support Mr. Ellis at this time. Thank you. From here, I can see the diversity. I'm going to change the tone a little bit. 
my name is Ying Zhang. I moved from upstate New York to here 16 years ago. And uh, one of the reasons for me to move to here is the North Carolina is one of the best places for living, you know, and also working and low tax. When I shop in my house the time for home, I did look for both Orange County as well as Wake County. And one of the things attract me that time was a good environment, friendly people, and uh, also low tax. So I would say that if we see the tax increase from year to year, I looked at my tax bill 16 years ago versus today, it has been increased quite a bit. And uh, hearing that the possibility of increase another close to 10% tax for the property, I feel this is so much for a mother, for a working mother, and for a resident in uh, Wake, uh, Wake County. Also, I can see that if this kind of trend can continue to grow, it will maybe lose the competitive <laughs> you know, um, age you know, for people who relocated to North Carolina, to Wake County. Even though I want to say that I love Wake County, I love the school here. I think we have very good school already. You know, I have two kids grow up here, and I'm a very happy mom. So I hear all the need. Everybody say, I'm not saying, I agree with that. You know, there's a need always. There's another point is how efficiently are we having the operation uh, use, I mean, how effective is the operation uh, we run here? I pass by the White Oak Church Road every weekend to go to church. I saw an elementary school built there two years ago. Even up to today, there's no kids, no teacher, no cars parked there. So I was just questioning and maybe make, want to make all of you think, given the current budget or the current increase of the tax from the property value, all the percentage already increased. Do we really need to have a budget with that high percentage increase in order for us as a resident in this county really uh, can afford and also still happily live here. My concern is, yes, we need to take care of all the need, but at the same time, how could we be efficiently use the budget we already have? How do we plan for the future so it's easy for the resident in this county, in this county you know, when we hear about the tax increase, you know, maybe not to this percentage, you will say, yes, I see the result, I can see why. So what am I asking here is, of you, can you take a closer look of the budget and evaluate whether or not we truly need that much increase of tax? And also giving more time for the resident of the county to really understand the need. Thank you very much. Li Zing. Vera Wang, Tao Wang. Thank you. It is my honor to speak here to have my voice heard. I'm the resident of the Wick County for more than 20 years. We really enjoyed the affordable life here, but with the increased taxes these years, our quality of lives are decreased. So I'm against tax hike. Actually, increases in population automatically brings proportional increases in revenue. Wick County Schools only added a net of 42 additional students last year, asking for minutes more on top of the big increases they have gotten in the past few years is unwarranted. So please vote no for the proposal. Thank you so much. Good evening, my name is Vera Wang. Uh, I came to uh, Wei County for more than 10 years. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Uh, I have two sons and take care of my old uh, dad, uh, who is uh, more than 80 years old. So my husband work and bring the income to my home. 
uh, I know, I fully understand there's a lot of space, a lot of area to, sp to spend money, uh, to, to spend to old, old people to take care of uh, his uh, hearing, tea, uh, dentist, uh, yeah, um, and healthy, and to my son for their uh, healthy, for healthy growing, and their um, activities, a lot, of, a lot of spending. But I have to limit my spending um, by my um, husband's income, right? So um, because of the, the, the property tax, uh, we, we bought the, uh, the house yeah, years ago, more than uh, about uh, six years ago. We uh, calculate how much I have to spend to the mortgage, to the HOA, to the, to the utility, uh, to the property tax, to the insurance. But right now, everything is increased. But this time, this uh, about 10% of uh, tax, uh, property tax increase is really out of my family financial budget. Uh, that's, uh, I think that I'm not alone. Uh, a lot of people have the similar situation. And we know uh, in American uh, inflation Recent years only about uh, two, three percent, and uh, and everybody, uh, yeah, like my husband, he's not expect uh, his salary will increase more than three percent per year, but that's that's everything we can make a budget for my for my for my family. So you won't like the family like us may getting uh, broken, right? So that's an issue. So I agree with. Uh, the uh, speaker, like uh, we know, there's a need, there's there's a necessary spending money to our uh, school system, but we think about we should plan uh, the details, so how to save some money and spend to the money to the really necessary area. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tao. Uh, I'm a taxpayer in, in Wake County, and I'm very concerned about this budget. This budget was announced in very short notice, and only two public hearings are scheduled on the same workday. It's the first time that our contributions to Wake County public school system operating expenses would exceed half a billion dollars. So the taxpayers deserve to have more time to review the budget. Also, if a taxpayer is not available today, he or she will have no chance to attend any public hearing. Therefore, the vote on the June 3rd should be postponed, and we should allow and schedule more public hearings. This budget contains two major parts. The 3.8 cent tax increase, which was approved by voters last year, and the 2.56 cent increase, which has never been approved. As responsible members of this society, we fully support to support our schools. That's why the voters already approved this 3.8 cent on the ballot. If the extra 2.5 cent is needed, why didn't we see anything related on the ballot last year? Let us vote. This budget does not address the number one issue from taxpayers enhance the operational efficiency. I'm glad to hear from Mrs. Vicky Anderson about this uh, good governance program, and I believe it's a good step towards more efficient government. However, this budget didn't reflect that. And the taxpayers will need to see the improved efficiency to ensure our tax money is well spent. This budget reduces our competitive advantage. We county is competing with other fastest growing counties in America for opportunities. Don't believe me? Take a look at Apple. Why did Apple choose Texas Austin instead of Wake County? The proposed tax increase will further reduce the competitive advantage of Wake County. This budget hurts first-time home buyers, low-income families, including African-American, Latinos, people with color, veterans, and retirees who have fixed income. Many of them are renters. If you increase 
the property tax by 10%, the burden will be shifted to renters. And more people will be pushed to affordable housing, and the homelessness problem will worsen. Therefore, I'm here to ask we county commissioners, Mr. Sig Hutchinson, Mrs. Susan Evans, Mr. Greg Ford, and Mrs. Jessica Holmes, the chairwoman, and Mr. James West, Mrs. Wiki Adamson, and Mr. Matt Calibro to veto the proposed budget. Thank you. Everett Zhao, Jack Liu, Cassandra Watson. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm Everett Zhou, and uh, I have lived in Wake County for 26 years. And my daughter was <coughs> born in Raleigh, and now is a junior in college. So first thing, I thank you, everyone, for uh, what you have done for the Wake County's school excellence. But for this, this tax increase, I really cannot vote yes. I have to vote no. Because two things. First, in past five, six years, Wick County has built lots of the properties. That means the base of the revenue, tax revenue, has been significantly increased. We really need to use that increase, tax increase revenue wisely and to support all the things. Second, <clears throat> before we have tax increase, we should think about the efficiency or the cost saving, cost cutting. Every, every morning, every day, we see so many school buses going around because we bus students from east to west, from west to east, from north to <clears throat> south, and going around. Do we really need that? Can we let kids go to neighborhood schools? If we can, how much money we can save and how much money we can use for really supporting the schools for the kids who really need that kind of service. So I hope everyone here in this room, all Wake County citizens, think about before tax increase, how can we save money? How can we use money efficiently? Thank you. Jack Liu, Cassandra Watson, followed by Angela Schioli. And good evening. My name is Jack Liu. I come from the Cary to here uh, this evening to show I'm my opinion to this budget increase. We all support public school system for sure because our kids are here. But the question is, has money, uh, has this budget been uh, used wisely to every kids? eventually. So we know that $3.8 uh, $3 has been approved by voters, so which we all know that. But along this budget, we have other money who has never been approved by voters. So if it's really um, that reasonable, why don't we put it on the uh, voucher for every citizen to show their opinion? So increase the 10% is a dramatic tax hike here. So because, you know, we have uh, lots of properties has been constructed here, and also we have 10 nearly 10% 10 inc popular increase every year in this county, which is good. And we also have the net um, inflation for the house price, adding, uh, which are about 6 or 7%, adding all these factors together. Naturally, without any um, a tax increase is automatically around 20 to 30 percent tax, uh, more tax every year to support what we need to do. And even within this uh, budget here, we have we saw that you know, we always have 3.45 for a public s school system. What is we need more ex um, explain for what the other additional uh, cost. Uh, the tax is used for, and what is the county operation tax is used for. I suggest everybody to take a closer look at this budget to see, is this, has this been really efficient use? 
Because, uh, you know, first, um, the tax is very important, and it is for every taxpayer because uh, every because it's dramatically impact, impact every, everyone's uh, living uh, standard, and uh, for even especially for those poor people, and uh, the increase of tax and uh, is the is the dramatic impact for them as well. So if you increase the property tax, they will be, be bypassed from landlord to renter, eventually uh, hurt everybody. So on the other side, uh, on top of that, increase the tax also will damage the economy of. Wake County, which, uh, which is the negative factor to the entire county as well. So that's uh, for above reasons, I think I wish everybody to have a careful, careful thinking about whether this money has really been wise used and is the money being efficient project and uh, operated and uh, double think before we approve any budget. And uh, at the moment, my opinion to this tax of 10% tax hike will be no. Thank you. Good evening. Every child, one voice. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to you all today, and I want to thank each of you for your committed service to our community. My name is Cassandra Watson, and I am the president of the Wake County PTA Council. On behalf of our board of directors, I am here to offer and express our support for the Board of, the, for the board of Education's budget request for 2019-2020. We ask for your support in fully funding that request for the benefit of our students, schools, teachers, and our community. As the nation's oldest and largest child advocacy association, the PTA is committed to improving the education, health, and safety of all children. We speak with one voice for every child. Every school system should have sufficient funding to provide every child with a sound, basic education. This includes funding for qualified teachers in all classrooms, skilled administrators in all schools, adequate support staff, and qualified professionals such as counselors, nurses, social workers, and psychologists. The Wake County PTA Council Board of Directors strongly supports <clears throat> the Wake County Public Schools mission to provide a relevant and engaging education and to graduate students who are collaborative, creative, communicators, and critical thinkers. To facilitate fulfillment of this mission, the Wake County PTA Council Board of Directors strongly believes that providing adequate funding for public education is paramount to attracting, developing, and retaining great teachers, support staff, and administration, as well as other professionals. To ensure the holistic achievement for all students in the Wake County public school system. The Wake County PTA Council Board of Directors respectfully requests that you, the Wake County Board of Commissioners, fully fund the 2019-2020 budget. We support whatever measures are necessary to make this happen. We have great schools here in Wake County, and we have, as the 15th largest school district in the nation, we need to fully fund these schools in order to ensure that our students and teachers receive the resources they need in order to keep our schools strong and our students continuously achieving, preparing to become productive citizens. We are a booming and thriving county that depends on a vibrant and talented workforce. And just where does that workforce develop its skills, motivation, drive, and inspiration from our schools and from our teachers? What starts here changes everything. Thank you for your support of school funding that fully meets the needs of all of our students, teachers, and schools across Wake County. Thank you. Ms. Gioli will be followed by Kim Mackey and Priscilla Ockard. As most of you know, I teach high school government, and so I know the conventional wisdom about tax increases. 
Supposedly, the voters hate them. And yet, when I took that premise out for a drive on my social media feed a couple of weeks ago, I found it lacking. I posted this comment. This is an amazing deal. The proposed county budget for about $160 in additional property taxes next year that I will gladly pay, Wake will get five new ambulances, boost per pupil spending by $170 per student, get 14 new caseworkers to help neglected and abused children, get rid of late fees at the library, alleluia, expend well water testing, expand well water testing so my parents will know their drinking water is safe, and ensure voting will be more secure for the 2020 election. And that's just the start. Expanded parks, expanded mass transit, I could go on and on. Take my money. Comment below if you agree. Ms. That Yoli, post Yoli, received 105 likes and only one semi-negative comment. 105 likes. Dane West, a teacher in Lee County, and Nicole Smith said, this budget is attracting them to move to Wake County. Mike Chapel, my driver's ed teacher in 1989 said, if you want good schools and good services, you have to pay for it. Kim Mackey, my friend said, thankful our county will step up as we wait for the states to trickle down. Paige Howard, my, ha my hairdresser said, says it, it, she says it sounds extremely reasonable to her and she likes the transparency. Lisa Mead said she would pay more with a smile. What is going on here? I have a theory. We are Marie Kondoing our government. Our federal government, it may not be bringing many of us as much joy these days. Our state government, recent elections in wake flipping seat after seat indicates we are not feeling the love. But as an increasing number of us seek experiences and joy over, well, stuff, we know our local government is where it is at. This is where we get parks, libraries, greenways, critical waste management, and recreation. Robust local government is the key to a vibrant county that is proactively planning and expanding to meet this county's growing needs. It is a joy to spend a little more and know that we will have stronger schools, adequate services, and strategically applied resources to meet the needs of our most vulnerable citizens. So, it is time to eschew convention. I represent 105 people that don't want to use our money to buy more stuff. We want services and experiences, security, convenience, and learning opportunities. And we know our county government can deliver those things at a great value. So be brave, have courage, and believe the voters who enthusiastically are in your care. Finally, I've had a last minute cancellation for guest speaker day this Friday at 10.30 to 12. So if you would like to come be with us, let me know. Most of you know where to find me because so many of you have so graciously attended to be with my students at Leesville Road High School in the past. Thank you. Oh, hold on, I got it. Miss um, Mackey, uh, one moment. Um, what we will not do here today is be disrespectful. Each of you will be given your opportunity to speak we will listen to each of you. We will stay here until the last person has something to say to make sure that you are heard. But what I'm not gonna stand for is the booing of educators, of citizens, of any taxpayer, whether, that, whether you're on the left or the right, Republican or Democrat, that's not what we're going to do. We are going to be respectful, thank you. Ms. Mackey, please continue your speech. I have allowed you all to cheer and talk and clap during speeches. That has clearly been taken advantage of. At this point, I'm going to ask that you hold all of your cheers and your claps until after each speaker has spoken, at which time you may clap or cheer or however you wanna do it. But what you will not do is speak or clap or cheer or be disruptive while someone is speaking. Please continue. Thank you, we appreciate that. My name is Kim Mackey. I've been a teacher for Wake County Schools since 2007, and I'm the mom of one child who's class of 2030 and the other class of 2033. So um, thank you very much for your, your interest in supporting the budget, and we certainly hope you'll fully fund it. There's been a lot of discussion 
lately over paying higher property taxes. While we discuss who should pay, if we should pay, how we should pay, let me share with you who has been paying. Your kids and grandkids, nieces and nephews and neighbors, the kids we see at the bus stop have been paying. Our local schools have been asked to do more with less during a period of nationwide economic growth. If you're looking to voice your frustration with an increase in property taxes, it is short-sighted to direct that frustration to the people who sit before us. Like students and teachers have been doing for too long now, you are now experiencing the consequences of tax cuts and unfunded mandates from our state's General Assembly. Over the last 10 years, the North Carolina state government has shortchanged our school's $6,549.10 per student. That's over $137,000 less in my son's first grade classroom and nearly $200,000 that could have been invested in my own high school classroom. Our students are paying for cutting the corporate income tax rate in half and individual income taxes that cut rates for the wealthy by over 25% but offer little savings for families like mine. As County Manager Ellis shared with us, growth doesn't pay for itself. Our students and schools have been paying for growth. 42 has been discussed a lot. Let's turn it around and add three zeros. Over the last 10 years, we've added over 24,000 students to our district. That's 42 backwards with three zeros at the end. There are around 42 trailer classrooms on the campus of the school where I teach and over 1,000 trailers countywide. A new school opens nearby next year, but all of the trailers at my school will still be full. If you find trailers adequate learning environments, come visit my class with 34 seniors packed inside or smell the papers inside my work bag. Last year, our state had $643 million budget surplus, yet public school supporters are still fighting to return state per pupil funding to 2008 levels. Since tax cuts in 2013, our state has surrendered $3.6 billion per year. Last year alone, $900 million that could have gone to our schools went to an additional quarter percent corporate tax cut, so state lawmakers could congratulate themselves for having the lowest corporate tax rate among states who have one. This year, leaders in the General Assembly want to lower the franchise tax, which could cost the state $1 billion over the next five years. This property tax increase has stirred some of you to action. Direct it to the source of the problem. Leadership in the state General Assembly, not the group before us, is trying to shield our schools from paying so much of that price at the state level um, from those tax cuts. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Priscilla Ockard, and I am the co-chair for the Crosby Advocacy Group that is based out of the Crosby Garfield Building. I'm here to thank you for your support that you've given us thus far, and now I'm asking for continued support for the work being done through the Crosby Advo Advocacy Group. This group is supported by your Social and Economic Vitality um, Office. Our group helps bring resources and programming to residents of the Southeast Raleigh area. The work being done is helping to eliminate the root cause and not just the symptoms of issues. I understand that requests made to support staffing and building enhancements for social and economic vitality at Crosby Garfield Building did not make the budget. And on behalf of the Crosby Advocacy Group, made up of community residents and partners, serving vulnerable communities, we ask that you please reconsider that decision so we can continue to do the good work of eliminating the root cause of these issues. Thank you. Shoping Shin, followed by Lynn Edmonds, and then Christine Grantham. Good evening, dear commissioners. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I see many uh, long-term uh, residents. Here, actually, I'm trying to give some input as a, as a newcomer, a new resident. Less than three years ago, I moved from California to North Carolina for the nicer surroundings, lower tax, better educations. You know, education is a great cause. However, we shouldn't use that to, to cover many additional causes. We need to still be careful about how we spend the money. 
We know California has the highest income tax, very high housing, which gives a very high uh, property tax. But however, look at their public school system. Are they better? Are they among the best? No, they are opposite. They rank the bottom. So the higher tax doesn't necessarily correlate with better education. So that's why we need to spend smartly. Little, mo little money can do great cause. As previous many other speakers have mentioned, here we have a great uh, housing market for recently a few years. We increase tax base a lot. Uh, by increasing the market, the new, so many new homes, and the increases the appraisal frequency. Well, uh, I would really would like to see the breakdown of all those new tax money, how we spend on those. Uh, how those money not enough to cover the proposals. Actually, as our residents already show our support for education by approving three bonds. So I feel we already have enough money. I really would like to see the breakdowns. And, uh, uh, and actually, uh, with money that's analyzed detailed, we actually possibly could see a tax cut instead of a tax raise. Uh, that's my point. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lynn Edmonds, and I'm speaking tonight on behalf of Great Schools in Wake in support of the school system's budget request. We are a local division of Public Schools First NC, a statewide organization that aims to educate North Carolina citizens on education policy and funding at the state level. Because we follow state funding of public schools so closely, we are crystal clear on the failings of the state where public school funding is concerned. And we know that more and more of the funding of our public schools is being pushed down to our local governments across the state. This is unfair and needs to change, but it is our current reality. We also know that Wake County citizens support our public schools. The school system budget request is funding for our students. It is funding that will benefit our students. And regardless of who is supposed to provide that funding, our students need the funding, and we believe most Wake, most Wake citizens want you to show up for them. I attended the public hearing earlier today and heard a lot of misinformation. There's no way I'll be able to address all of that here, but just a few items. The school system isn't giving pay raises to teachers. It is expected that the state will give teachers a pay raise, and there are local costs associated with that state decision. That's one of many items in the school system request that is impacted by what the state legislature does. The school system is asking for money to raise pay for cafeteria workers, bus drivers, other staff making below $15 an hour because the state left those workers out of a living wage bill that they had in their last budget cycle. Several speakers today asked, and tonight, asked where the transparency is and how their tax dollars have been spent or will be spent. The school system budget is 214 pages long, and that details where every dollar will go. The county manager's proposal is 422 pages and also outlines where those dollars will be spent. Both bodies, both governing bodies, have web pages dedicated to these budget documents with all pages accessible to, to the public. Finally, with regard to student growth, the 42 student growth number got a lot of press attention, as it should, it's very newsworthy, considering that Wake County Public Schools was growing by thousands of students per year for such a long time. However, this drop in overall new enrollment does not mean we don't need new schools or new funding. Let's look at this as an opportunity to get some of our deferred needs taken care of, to uncap some of our most overcrowded schools, and to hopefully get some students out of mobile classrooms. Superintendent Moore and the school board have requested money that our students need, money that our teachers need to do their jobs well. Tax increases are one of the hardest decisions that you have to make, but when we see these increases as investments in our children, you must do what's right, even when it's hard. Voters that supported you and put you in office know that you're up to that challenge. Thank you.
Christine Grantham, who will be followed by Jocelyn McGinnis Hickey, and then Frank Zhu. Good evening. My name is Christine Grantham, and I am a proud parent of two Wake County Public School System kids. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight and to thank you for your past support of public education and ask you to continue that support by fully funding this year's proposed budget. I know that your team and that the school systems finance teams have been collaborating and working really hard to put this budget together. And I really appreciate their efforts and that hard work to put all those pages together and uh, hope to see that that collaboration continues year round. I know this proposed budget is lean. It doesn't contain everything that I would like to see in it. The Board of Education was asked to take a multi-year approach to funding for certain items like school psychologists, social workers, counselors, and nurses. Likewise, with funding for additional assistant principals and non-certified employees and our deferred maintenance. This budget does that, and I feel it comes to you already as a compromise. Something that's important to me is the school safety and student support. With suicide being the second highest cause of death among ages 10 to 24, we have to support our children better. But I cannot speak to this proposed budget without also mentioning the General Assembly's role in it. As I see it, the General Assembly has not been fulfilling their constitutional responsibility to adequately fund our public schools. Instead, they've shifted more and more of that responsibility to our local government both urban and rural, every year, and I know that impacts our rural communities especially hard. Even with a strong economy and a surplus, the General Assembly passes unfunded legislation, restricts salaries, and does not come close to funding those psychologists, nurses, school counselors, and social workers to nationally recommended levels. It's overwhelming to me that in 2019, our per student funding levels are 7% below 2008 levels, even when adjusted for inflation. As a community, we need to hold the General Assembly accountable for their share while also doing our part. And yes, it means a tax increase. Every time I'm at my girls' schools, I'm in awe of the hard work, compassion, and professionalism of the teachers, the staff, and the administrators there. I'm overwhelmed by their investment in our children. As parents and as a local government, we need to invest in them as well. There's no better investment than a child, their future, and the people who help get them there. I'm asking you to raise my taxes for the betterment of our community. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Jocelyn McGinnis Hickey. I live in North Raleigh. I'm here tonight as a parent. I have two children in the Wake County Public School System. Um, my daughter goes to Millbrook High School. My other daughter goes to West Millbrook Middle School. We love those schools. Their teachers are amazing. Their administrators go to bat for every child that walks in that door, and we appreciate them so much. Um, in fact, I think that Wake County Public Schools has done an amazing job in the way that they educate our kids and invest in their futures. Um, considering the lack of funding that's come down from the state. And that's really only because Wake County is strong and because you believe in public education. I, I, as Christine said, we really feel for the rural communities who um, are impacted by state mandates that are, do not have the resources that Wake County has. So I really appreciate the fact that you've proven time and again in the last couple of years that you do support public education and um, that you fill in the gaps where you need to. Um, I've been watching the school board go through a very careful process of thinking about every penny in this budget. Um, it is a lot of money, but it still is less than we need. We're still playing catch up from 10 years ago. And in a school district this large, the 15th largest in the nation, um, I think that we can do so much better. So I'm asking you to please come as close as you can to the school board's budget request. Um, I'm also a homeowner, and I'm happy to invest in my county, and um, I'm, I'm all for 
better schools and more firefighters any day. So I, I support a property tax hike. Thank you. Frank Zhu, followed by Greer Webb, then Eleanor Oakley. Good evening. I um, appreciate uh, giving, uh, giving me this chance to uh, express my opinions on this matter. Um, I am a Wake County uh, resident for 12 years, and I have uh, three kids, and two are in the uh, Wake County uh, schools. Um, I am against this uh, uh, tax hike of 10% uh, uh, property tax, and uh, I uh, have three reasons. Uh, first, this is a, a big budget. It's a 1.3 billion, and uh, I think this uh, deserves more time for the public to, uh, to evaluate, and uh, cause this is only two hearings for today, and I, um, I barely miss it today. And the, the second, secondly is the, um, I, uh, I think the, uh, we need to uh, look at the, uh, how the budget is used, uh, looking into the operation uh, efficiency. And uh, as an example, I, um, I think the, um, my, uh, my first child, I, um, my first child had uh, enrolled in the um, Science Olympia program, and um, my, uh, but my second child uh, lo lose this chance, and I heard about this uh, program, the great program was cut. And uh, um, in, my, in my view, there's uh, um, some areas might be improved, some area maybe, so we can support some good programs. Um, and I don't see I don't see, uh, with the tax increasing every year, uh, I don't quite see the benefit. Um, the third point is the, um, the, the third point is the, um, as a public uh, policy, um, I ask you for uh, evaluate all the uh, revenue income uh, instruments to um, to seek uh, all the uh, opportunities to increase uh, uh, our uh, increase our um, welfare and uh, to put this burden in the homeowner and the renters. Um, uh, uh, we need more time to um, uh, get the voter to approve it. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Chair Holmes and fellow commissioners. My name is Greer Webb, and I'm a senior at Sanderson High School in Raleigh. I want to begin with a little thanks. I want to thank this board for its willingness, willingness to engage and to listen. You have shown yourselves to be invested in the young people of this county in our many conversations, and I thank you for the discussion you so freely allow. From seeing some of you at our first town hall on school safety, to seeing you all at local events, and political activities, even sporting events. The ability to interact as a community with our leaders is something we should hold, hold dear and value. Discussion is the root of service, and in this, you have shown yourselves to be servants of this public that you see before you. In service to the public good, one of your many responsibilities is to work through the county's annual budget. The Wake County Manager has put forth his recommended budget for this upcoming fiscal year, and it is now your job to discuss it. This budget represents the single largest county investment in public education that our schools have ever seen, and that deserves praise. It also deserves discretion. The proposed budget increases the county's contribution to charter schools. That is not inherently a bad thing. Charter schools are public schools as well, and the vast majority provide a solid education to the students who attend them. The problem is that they carry little to no public oversight capability. In a recommendation that provides more than half a billion dollars to public schools, think about who needs that money. 
and use discretion in funding charter schools over traditional public ones. This county is one of youth, of new blood and ceaseless growth. Young people are at the forefront of this growth and we will be the ones affected by decisions made now. We must be consulted. We must be listened to, not simply heard. In this system, this country and this county, we are all beneficiaries of government and young people must be seen and accepted as part of that. Young people, more than anyone else, understand the value of power. We offer a slightly different vision of what leadership le means because we recognize how a position of power reaches across the limits of one's job description and into shaping and aiding a community's values. Good government works for all people, the young and the poor, the disabled and disadvantaged. You can use where you are to speak out against injustice when you see it. For young people, for the people in this county affected by injustice, it does not matter whether or not you control the situation they find themselves in. It matters that you use your voice and shape the conversation around the morality of this county. So use your power. Use it when you talk with this Wake County community and use it when you exercise discretion over the funding of our schools. Use it when you see brutality on our streets and use it when you prepare for our growth. Our government, municipal or national, is vested with the responsibility of community. You are our leaders and we can all do more. Thank you for discussion. Thank you for your investment in us and thank you for your leadership. Ms. Oakley, Bill Lawson, Susan Book. Good evening, commissioners. Madam Chair, County Manager and staff members, I'm Eleanor Oakley, I'm the head of the United Arts Council of Raleigh and Wake County. It's always a privilege and pleasure to be in front of you. I've come tonight to thank the Commission and the Manager for your support and for the funding in the proposed Fiscal Year 20 budget. We will use the funding to support our Artists and Schools grants, the Wheels and the Bus Fund for elementary schools for arts and cultural field trips, the Municipal Murals Program, and arts grants around the county. The United Arts Council is the only source in Wake County for K-12 schools to seek support to help underwrite professional teaching artists for performances, multi-day residencies, and workshops. With the county's help this year, we supported for 150 schools, 442 professional teaching artist visits. Of these, 275 were performances, 46 were writer residencies, and 101 were other residencies. Working with the school system, we were also able to put 22 days of master classes in high schools, reaching high school dance, theater, and music classes this year. All of these teaching artists worked with and in front of 165,000 students. You also helped make possible 67 arts and cultural field trips taken by entire grade levels in Wake County Elementary Schools through our Wheels on the Bus Fund. We covered transportation costs for these and sometimes a little bit of admission costs were applicable. We're especially proud that we were able to fund some special education class field trips because these often have no funding whatsoever. We thank you again for the amount of funding recommended in the fiscal year 20 budget. We urge you to pass it. We look forward to working with you next year as you review various funding decisions. Together, as always, we'll continue to work toward building a better Wake County. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bill Lawson. I've been a resident for uh, three years. Uh, uh, and with this, with this increase, my, uh, our taxes will have gone up 18%. Uh, the pr proposed increase being 6.36 cents per hundred is actually 9.7% increase. And residents of Wake County have had their taxes increased four out of the past five years. The five-year average increase for all counties in North Carolina is 32 the five-year average for Wake County has been 7.64. So when you look at that since 2014, 
Wake County has experienced a 24.2% increase in property taxes. Uh, so I just urge you to take a, take a further look at it. Uh, I, I, am not in, I do not support this tax increase. I urge you to vote no. But I'd like to just tell you a short story for what it's worth. Uh, years ago, I used to sell concrete, and uh, average average uh, home in Coral Springs, Florida, was 40 yards. Had a customer tried to get a 10 cent a yard increase, which would have been four dollars for the whole house. And I said to him, I said, Bruce, this is nickel and dimes. And he told me, he says, Bill, he says, you take care of the, watch the nickel and dimes, the dollars will take care of itself. And I left, came back two years later. He was the biggest builder in that area. And, you know, I'm not throwing, I'm not being critical, but I look at this building, it's a beautiful building, but if this is consistent with, hey, you know, this is government spending, I just urge you, look at the nickels and dimes, dollars will take care of themselves. Thank you. Susan Book, followed by Terry Marcellin Little. Still hate doing this. <laughs> Hi, my name is Susan Book. I stand in support of the Wake County budget and however much you can do for our Wake County schools. No one likes to talk about taxes, but they are necessary. We are faced with a burden from our state, a state not only underfunding our public schools, but other services as well. Is it more efficient to fund things at the state level? Well, yes, and it should enrage us all that they aren't doing our job. Still, our need is great. Year after year, our public schools have taken a hit. Our services do not come for free. Make no mistake, our county services are essential. They deserve funding because the people who receive the funding are essential. We may talk dollars, but what we're really talking about is people. When we talk about Wake County dollars, we're talking about our children. That is where our focus needs to be. Our children are worth everything we can give. I urge you to stretch every penny for our kids. It isn't easy to do the un unpopular things. I have some experience. It isn't easy to raise taxes, but perhaps it isn't so unpopular. Know that the people of Wake we're brave enough to vote yes on three bonds. When you vote, don't just look at the dollars or even the services. Please look to the people who depend on you. I am a proud Wake County citizen. I am proud of our public schools. Please keep that pride alive. Thank you. Terry Little, followed by Melissa Williams. Honorable commissioners, we, uh, we have elected you to wisely administer to the needs of our county, and we thank you for that. And for decades, personally, I have volunteered in many roles, to help with town parks. I've helped in my children's elementary, middle, and high schools as a volunteer, and now for the Wake County Library System. I've seen needs and constraints, financial constraints from the inside, standing shoulder to shoulder with teachers and librarians. And I deeply respect what they do and what you do. Nobody likes taxes, but it takes very important dollars to run our critical public services, education, libraries, parks, and we thank you for making these important decisions. I'm a native North Carolinian. I believe in excellence in education and quality of life here in North Carolina. I've lived in Northeast Wake County since 1993, and I also represent District 1 as a member of our Wake County Library Commission. I'm very proud to say how access to our library supported my own children's education. I do serve on a citizen's advisory board that's appointed by you to advise on the operation of our county's library system. So proud of this system. 3.4 million visits this past year to our libraries. 
and a circulation of material. More than 11 million resources were circulated last year. Um, the, the library system, it just provides a critical resource for our community. Um, it provides access to everyone in this room, equal access to the internet, to computers, to books, to professional services, like get that job. And so importantly, things like um, programs that help, help prepare our children for kindergarten. Um, free and equal access to everyone in this room for learning opportunities. The libraries that you should be so proud of that you fund connect people, they engage people, educate and entertain even. But this budget supports all of this important work that I've referenced. We encourage you to support the proposed budget that will keep our libraries healthy and relevant, keep them a critical community resource, and we, we encourage you to help us build and improve the existing libraries that we have planned. We, we very much encourage you to make good use of these resources and have our county libraries, all of them open seven days a week, use our resources for our citizens and expand programs like Every Family Ready to Achieve to those five libraries that serve lower income communities. And we ask you to especially consider eliminating fines for overdue books and materials that create unnecessary economic barriers. And, you know, it's going to increase the use of our libraries and it's going to help people learn. And that policy, by the way, is fully endorsed by the American Library Association as well as our own commission. So for all of this and more, for supporting everything that makes our county great, we thank you. And um, I know, like I said, nobody likes taxes, but it does cost money to keep this county great. We thank, thank you, you very so much, much for your comment. <laughs> Melissa Williams, Errol J, Tappan Vickery. Good evening and thank you for being so welcoming. This is my first time giving public testimony. I'm Melissa Williams, a teacher in first grade at Hilburn Drive Academy. I'm in my sixth year employed by Wake County Public Schools. I'd like to speak about my concerns as a teacher and on behalf of my friends who are first responders at their stations tonight. We need to address burnout in our people helping careers. Burnout from doing too much. People taking on ancillary roles because of low staffing, quitting because there's not enough professional development funding to keep pace with on-the-job changes. It balances poorly with the high living standards people in Wake County have grown accustomed to, and anything less than a seven cent increase will undermine that quality. Our jobs are difficult enough without scrambling to operate at a basic level. This month, district chiefs were being pulled to cover unfilled ambulance shifts. As a classroom teacher, I am doing the job of nurse, counselor, and psychologist, even though I am not licensed to practice any of those roles. I do not feel qualified to give a rectal seizure medication, yet that training was expected of me. I am not, nor do I want to be, for legal reasons, trained to restrain students of special needs or trauma who are increasingly mainstreamed. These are safety and ethical concerns every taxpayer should take pause and reflect on. I'm glad to see the increased EMS positions and social work positions on the budget proposal. We needed them a long time ago. When someone retires or an experienced person quits in these jobs, it's like losing three workers instead of one. New hires do not last in these fields without mentors and guidance. When we achieve the education level required for these careers, we want them to be sustainable in the long term. We don't want to leave when our debt to achieve that degree will last decades. Teachers statistically quit after their fifth year. Beginning teachers are too busy to come tonight. I don't recall hearing any speak to you last year when I came. I'm one of the youngest in this room, which means I have the longest to work. We desperately need these things to deal with what is expected of us. We need whole school professional development like the community resilience and trauma model. 
At this training, I was the only classroom teacher in attendance because most schools could probably only afford to send their school psychologists and counselors. Please fully fund our public schools and public service employees so that we can remain working in the paths we chose. Giving up hurts, but I hope I won't need to leave. I just need stability. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you. I have been a Wake County resident for the past 11 years. This will, this will be my 12th year, I guess. And while I don't have children in the Wake County school system, my neighbors do. So I have been able to go to the schools and see some of the things that go on. And I do appreciate the work the hard work that teachers put in. I'm here because there were some very good teachers in my life and I appreciate the work that they did. And while I understand that taxes are necessary, I voted in the past two or three elections for the, the raises that you requested. And I honestly don't understand why the 10% jump is not being put before the taxpayers also, all right? I, I'm always amused when I hear people say, I'll gladly have you raise my taxes. Well, you can always volunteer to pay more. There is no reason for you, if you want your taxes raised, pay what they're asking you to pay, and then add a little bit and say, this is my contribution. Don't assume that because you want your taxes raised, that I'm gonna go along with it too. Taxes doesn't determine, is not determined by how much of the my money the government gets, allows me to keep, right? That's not how it works. You don't get to take and then decide what I get to keep. I decide how much I'm supposed to pay, or at least that's, that's the way I, I, I like to think about it. Right, which is why I don't let the government take taxes out of my paycheck. I pay on a quarterly basis. So while I appreciate what some of the money is used for, I appreciate the greenways, I appreciate the investment in EMS, although last week someone at my office, she passed out and she refused to go in an ambulance because she said it was gonna cost her too much. All right, so I disagree with this 10% raise. I ask you to veto it and make a proposal, put it on the ballot, and let the voters vote. And for those of you who are willing to have your taxes raised, please lead by example and go ahead and give as much money as you want, and then let the rest of us pay what we think is fair. Okay, that's it. As our next speaker joins us, um, please be reminded to hold your cheers and applause until after each speaker has spoken to give us the opportunity to make sure that we hear everything that each speaker has to say. Thank you. My name is Tappan Vickery and I am a Raleigh resident. I come here tonight as a mom. I have a child in Wake County Public Schools and I have a child who will start next year, so a child in preschool. And when I was preparing what I wanted to say tonight, I thought a lot about the last time I came here to this meeting, which was four years ago. And it was before my oldest son started into school. And at that time, I asked you to fully fund the school board's request, which I'm gonna ask you to do again. <laughs> um, but I was buying into the school system. And it was a very different feel. We knew that there was a desperate need. I knew that the schools were strapped. I knew that the resources were strapped, but I hadn't actually been in the schools yet. I hadn't participated. And now I have. I volunteer in the classroom. I volunteer with the PTA. I go on the field trips. I read to the kids who need extra assistance. I don't do math with them because it wouldn't actually help, <laughs> but I do what I can. 
and I give as much as I can. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is not just that our schools need more, because you know that. And I think that you've done a great job with this budget. I commend the county manager. I feel like we're, we're not at a bad spot. But I am going to ask you to do more because our community needs it. We talk a lot about Wake County being competitive. We talk a lot about what makes people want to come here. Well, some people might argue that the tax rate is more important than the schools. Even if you create this tax increase, if schools are at least as important as the taxes, I would argue that schools are significantly more important than the taxes. Even at this rate increase for comparable school districts, we're still gonna have one of the lowest tax rates in the country. So, you know, you gotta look at our comparison. So if we're trying to compete to bring businesses here, if we're competing to make a difference, we need to continue to invest in our schools. So I'm gonna ask you to do what we do at Combs, to begin with the end in mind. And if the end is that Wake County has children who are prepared to do any job, to thrive, and to deliver to this community, you simply must fully fund this request. We need our social workers, we need our support staff to actually make a living wage, and we need to heal as a community. And that's really what I believe the slowed growth gives you an opportunity to do. Investing in this budget gives you a chance to start to heal our schools and to heal the public's perception of our investment in the schools. So please, raise my taxes. Please fully fund the school board's request. Thank you. Cecilia Joyce, Patty Taylor, Paul Scholl. Hi, good evening. My remarks will be brief. My name is Cecilia Joyce. I'm an AIG teacher here in Wake County, a proud and low eagle parent, active PTA and NCAE member. I am a native of Wake County and a current county resident and homeowner, and I am asking for you to increase my taxes, our taxes, even a seven cent increase, so that our school system can, among other things, fully fund the K-3 class size mandate that the state imposed. I have personally and professionally felt the effects of this lack of funding, and I strongly believe that our students deserve better. We all know that our fourth and fifth grade students deserve better than what they have now in overcrowded, class, overcrowded classrooms. In addition, I feel very strongly that none of our instructional assistants, teacher assistants who are teaching and working with students every day, should be faced with using their school's food pantry to help feed their family. As I have known some to do. All of our educational support professionals deserve a living wage of at least $15 an hour and I am in support of this tax increase to that end. A quality school system is not free, but all citizens reap the benefits. Thank you, Wake County Commissioners, for your support, your full support of our wonderful Wake County public school system. Thank you for your time. Patty Taylor, Paul Scholl, we'll follow her. Hi, my name is Patty Taylor, and I'd first like to thank you for your service for what I'm sure is a real thankless job. Um, I would like to request that you would approve of the Wake County Public Schools budget fully. You may think that a small cut won't be that bad, but what happens is the cuts trickle down and many things get cut even more than they already were. I would like to give you an example of what happens when the budget is not fully funded. 
I am addressing building maintenance and technology, even though this is by no means the only area affected by budget cuts. I started teaching in Wake County in 2003. I was immediately impressed by my beautiful school. The building was spotless, the floors shined, the walls were clean, and the bathrooms were clean and functioning. This would be a great environment to work in, and it was. Fast forward, and now we have one, custo one custodian instead of three, even though there are contract workers at night. Our once spotless, shining building is dirty and in disrepair. Our floors that once looked like an ice rink are filthy and grimy. I was told by our custodian that they can only clean them with water. Our classroom walls and hallways have not been painted in at least 14 years, and, our con and the dirt and the grime on them as well as the holes and cracking paint. Our bathrooms are constantly breaking down, and when they are closed for repair <laughs> weeks on end, our kids have to go to the other side of the school, big kids to the little kids' side, little kids to the big kids' side, and then those bathrooms are filled with too many kids and it takes away from our instructional time. Adult bathrooms also break down regularly, and last year we went for several months with one working adult bathroom, often forcing staff to have to use student bathrooms when necessary. Our technology is outdated and in disrepair. Most teachers are lucky if they have four out of eight student laptops in working condition. We no longer have a technology teacher and the laptops in the lab and the library are outdated and often do not work. The majority of our smart bird boards and ladybugs are not working. Last year, a few classrooms received TV, smart TVs to replace the white the boards, and we were told that every classroom would get them this year, but that had, they have not appeared. It saddens me to think that no one cares about making our school the showcase that it once was, and that my school is by no means the only one experiencing this problem. If you truly want to all Wake County schools to be a showcase for the nation, I am asking that you fully support the Wake County Public Schools budget so our children will have the great schools that they deserve. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Scholl. I'm a middle school special ed teacher at Rollsville Middle School. I've been with Wake County for seven years. Well, when the school year finishes, we'll have been seven years with Wake County. Um, the voters have been clear. They want fully funding of our schools. They vote this way because our state falls short, which you know already. Um, but any kind of dissension towards this budget to me just seems misplaced towards really, we should be upset with the state here. You guys have offered with my time that I've been teaching in Wake County to extend the money towards Wake County in good faith of our teachers, in good faith of our students um, and our schools. Um, 56 more people per day is in your document. You know here that this funding issue is not going away. We're gonna be looking at increases for the next many years to come. But I'm here because it's so important that we do so. And I encourage you to fully fund our schools and the Wake County budget. The language that is being used by our school system is about maintaining the level of service. Maintaining. And it's so important to maintain when we as educators feel that there are already deficits and shortcomings. Um, but we need to increase our level of service. This is about the society that our children will form 15 years from now, when we think about the services that we provide. I teach at a Wake County school with 1,200 students. 1,200 students. One social worker who's there less than 60% of the time for 1,200 students. Three counselors, meaning one counselor for every 400 students. One interventionist, one interventionist, though at our school, 33% of students come from disadvantaged homes. One interventionist, though 37% of our students were not deemed proficient on state assessments. Wake County this year, or going into our next school year, is reducing the continuum of services for middle school students with reading and math disabilities. We no longer have a class called literacy connections or math connections, that's gone. I teach that class. That's devastating for those children. They are going to be mainstreamed into a classroom that they're not yet prepared for. Yet, 
this is coming at the same year that professional development for us has been drastically cut and we have less opportunities to attend professional development. So how are we gonna meet those students' needs in the classroom? Well, we just must work harder, I suppose. I teach in a math class as well with 34 students. 12 or 13 or so have um, IEPs, as individual edu uh, individualized education plans. Beyond that 12 students, we're talking about countless, countless students that would be considered uh, disadvantaged. The lack of funding for special education this year and this school year meant that we did not have a fully funded testing center. For our parents in the community, testing center means if a student has a accommodation like read aloud by request or read aloud or separate setting to help with uh, focusing, that we have a room in the building to do that that was not available at our school this year and we had a woman, a ret retired teacher volunteer to help that happen. We weren't able to meet those needs for our students. I ask you to really consider fully funding our budget proposal um, from Wake County, and I and thank you for your continued support year after year for our schools. Gary George, Josephine Burke. Thank you for your time and attention. I moved to Wake County six and a half years ago. I'm a retired veteran, and I'm here to talk about the impact on seniors. You have tens of thousands of seniors who cannot absorb a tax increase, and you are increasing it in the face of a, an environment you've already been told about, where the average value of the houses is going up, I guess I don't understand that. There has to be some fiscal control that can answer that. And uh, there's very few voices here. There are a lot of voices for the youth, and I understand that. I've got grandchildren and grandnephews and grandnieces, and I'm, uh, you know, I, I want to see good education, but I also don't want to see it, the baby thrown out with the bathwater. Only it's the other way around. It's the senior being thrown out with the bathwater. So I want to ask you for fiscal constraint and bring that budget in line. We shouldn't see inordinate, inordinate increases like that when this is an affluent county. We've got the ability to do it if we tighten our belts and sharpen our pencils. Thank you for your time. If you two would move the mic down a little bit so that we want to make sure we hear you. Mm -hmm. And I'm Isabella Humphreys. I'm speaking with her. Um, we want we you to lower, lower our, our tax taxes. <laughs> I think the most important lesson for a child to learn is financial responsibility. Don't leave your debt on our hands. Are you thinking, thinking about, about our future? future? Isabella Humphreys? What was that? Okay. Um, Ms. Angela Humphreys. Good evening, commissioners. Um, isn't it noble that the socialists of Wake County can say, quote, tax me, tax me, and things like, I'll pay double, Commissioners, I heard the exact same comments last year. What we really need to be doing is reviewing the tapes and make sure these folks that want everyone else's property and money so badly are paying what they offered. Let's hold those people and Wake County Public School System accountable. Red for Ed Wednesdays needs to stop coercing teachers and students to participate in socialist union political activities is not only unethical, but a large reason why parents across party lines, across party lines, 
prefer the freedom to choose the education which best suits their children. I know you guys heard this earlier, but the rest didn't. The goals of purple, hashtag purple for parents of North Carolina is number one, to prevent future walkouts and strikes. Number two, we want to expand school choice. Number three, we want to responsibly fund public schools. Number four, we would like to end politicking in schools. Number five, end indoctrination in schools. Number six, adding resource officers in every school. Hashtag purple for parents was created to give voice to parents, educators, kids, and the taxpayers who support our teachers, but not red for ed. Commissioners, are you doing the bidding of your districts? Were you even voted in by your districts? These are questions I leave you with again. Finally, I encourage all teachers to cut ties with the NCAE and give yourselves a $500 raise for the next year. Mr. Ellis, again, you control the property tax, but I control whether I pay it. The spending must be reined in. Thank you for your time. Sorry for the outburst earlier. Got excited. Andrew Branch, Mary Norman, Jen Smith. Next would be Andrew Branch. My name is Andrew. Um, never done this before. Um, I am under contract on my first home, hopefully. Um, and I have been living with my parents at 28 to try to save that money. Um, and I don't think, my question to you is what can you put off for one year? There is a tax revaluation next year on our property taxes are based on a down market. My taxes would not be going up 10%, I'm, I'm working into my monthly payments, what I can afford. The fact that I look at what the house I'm under contract for is currently valued at in the taxes. And what I'm under contract for now, my property taxes will go up 50% without this 10%. My parents, my grandparents are both in their 80s. Nothing is going to go up under 25%. The flips that have happened in the last five years, I almost went under contract on a house that I know it was valued well under $100,000. That property tax would double. My question is what can you put off for one year because property taxes are based on property values and they are undervalued right now. Can you, uh, uh, maybe you, you, I'd rather you raise the sales tax because then I don't have to shop at the mall, I can shop at Walmart. I can choose how much that I pay. Um, I certainly sympathize with the teachers. Um, you've heard a wide variety of teachers you, and I sympathize with the ones particularly who feel overworked because I, tried to get my high school English, English teaching license and after losing 15 to 20 pounds, I had to drop out and leave that $5,000 because I could not take the stress, I could not get my lessons plans done and get enough sleep. Um, I understand um, they are overworked. My question to you is to consider that extra 10% is going to be on the house that I'm under contract on for is going to be about uh, $100. We measure that in meals. That's not our Amazon Prime membership. We measure that in meals. Um, I talked to Josh Burton of the NC Housing Finance Association today, and Durham is shifting its community development people to its affordable housing people they gave homes who now can afford it due to increased property tax values. They've already had the revaluation. 
please keep that in mind. Thank you. Mary Norman, followed by Jen Smith, then Jeremiah Pierce. Um, good evening, County Commissioners. This is the first time that I've spoken in front of this assembly, and um, I appreciate the time that you all have spent here. I know we all have been here a long time. Um, again, my name is Mary Norman, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Creech Road Elementary um, School in Garner. I come before this, um, com this Board of Commissioners as a teacher. I've taught in Wake County for the last eight years. Um, I'm also the daughter of a teacher. She, my mother taught middle school for 35 years. Um, I'm a homeowner in Wake County. My husband and I have owned our home for seven years. Um, and next year, our eldest daughter will be a Wake County um, student. I have seen firsthand um, the effects that the budget have, not only on the property taxes that I pay, but in my classroom. You've heard the, um, the school conditions. Um, the floors of my classroom haven't been waxed in two and a half years. Um, my students eat breakfast in our classroom every day, and it's disgusting. Um, I also, since I teach kindergarten, see the students that come in and haven't received preschool education and how behind they are, and that's supported in this budget. So I want to see a fair wage for my teaching assistant who works with me and doesn't make the $15 an hour. I want to see the living wage for the uh, maintenance men that keep that are unclogging my sink and my water fountain in my classroom. I want to see the living wage for our one custodian and for the cafeteria workers. Um, I know a lot of people struggle paying taxes and have said, I can't afford this rate increase, but I can't afford it not to go through in my classroom, in my school, for myself, for my daughter, for um, our students in Wake County. So I really feel both sides of this, not only as a Wake County employee, but as a, a Wake County parent. And if there's any way that we can support this budget, it would really make the difference in classrooms like mine and in homes like mine. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jen Smith. I am a mom of two children in Wake County Schools. I am a longtime volunteer. I am in the school scene with the conditions that everyone's talking about seeing. Our staff work very hard. Um, as I was driving over here and listening to everybody talk about money, I thought about how funny it was that in my car I have $50 worth of EOG supplies that our teacher has asked parents to help her with so she doesn't have to pay for it herself. It's like pencil eraser caps. You know, it's water bottles, it's goldfish, that they all have to have the same thing. And that was $50 that I was like, all right, let me help out our teachers. Why is she having to pay for that? Um, I have heard from parents of students with special education that couldn't be here tonight, and they wanted to voice their support for fully funding this budget because there are significant concerns with how IEPs are being implemented. That means, and that's a legal document. And that comes down to the contract that the school system has with our parents to keep our kids safe and that they can have the best learning environment. But we need to be have the money at hand to pay for that assistance and that support. So please, on behalf of the people who couldn't be here tonight, please consider that. Um, another thing as I kept hearing um, tonight, it was about how the proposed tax increase makes us less competitive than other counties. So I was sitting back there, I was looking at the rates for other counties that people usually, that I know, compare us against. Uh, Mecklenburg, I noticed right now, is at um, 82 cents. Uh, Guilford is over, would, is over the proposed at 73. Forsyth is over at 72. Durham is over at 77. Johnson is over at 78. Uh, Orange is over at 85. So I just thought that was an important thing that I, I don't know if everybody knows to look for that information. It's very easy to find to help put this tax increase in perspective. Um, Thank you guys for your time, and I hope that you fully support the budget. Thank you. Thank 
Jeremiah Pierce, and then Andrea Reynolds. I apologize for looking like this. I had to coach my kids' baseball practice tonight. Um, out of the proposed budget, 60% was approved on our bonds. That was approved in November. Um, but I don't believe that this budget goes far enough. I don't think that we have done enough. Um, if you look over last year, if you don't like tax increases, vote your state rep out. We left $645 million in our state bank account, the highest in the country. They took our tax money and they kept it. Vote your state rep out. Our tax increase is not enough. I ran multi-million dollar, um, uh, can't even think right now, multi-million dollar uh, food industries. I now own a local business. Um, to build a business, you have to invest in that business. This budget does not call enough for investing in our children's future. It needs to be higher. This is a budget to stay pat, to make us normal. It still will not give us enough counselors, enough help for our students, enough help for our teachers, enough for anything for our future. Amazon didn't become a multi-billion dollar company by underfunding it, by understaffing it, by underdoing anything. Neither did Walmart or Target or any other multi-billion dollar company in this world. The only way you build a business is by investing properly and taking the money that you need to make a difference for the future. This budget falls short. I ask for more money for the budget so that we can get to the national average for our counselors, our social workers, our psychologists to make a difference for our children and our future. There's gonna come a day where I won't be able to walk and I'm gonna need help and these children are gonna be my doctors. If we don't start funding them now, how can they take care of me when I become older? Thank you. Andrea Reynolds, followed by Amanda Letke. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I've heard some rather astonishing things tonight uh, that, frankly, remind me a great deal of where I've come from. Um, I moved to Wake County a little over 11 years ago from the UK with my husband, who is a US Air Force veteran of 23 years. We brought our children back to America. The oldest was born in Florida. We brought them with us because we wanted them to experience what liberty means. I'm afraid we're very disappointed Exactly which proportion of our income would you suggest is sufficient for us to keep? Because a great number of our fellow residents seem to feel that they have free reign to put their hands in our pockets and in my husband's retirement to fund things that we do not approve. We do not approve of the US public education system. It is a political machine and you all know it and you are all part of it. And frankly, where you're going is terrifying for people who have left systems, who have gone this route. It is not a good place to go. Please think carefully. It is not your money. It is not their money. It is not the teacher's money. It is our money. These are not our children. This is my children. It is her children and his children. They are not our children as parents we are responsible for raising our children, for raising them to be independent people, not reliant on the state or the federal government or even their county government. Please think carefully because obviously 
our teachers of government have failed to teach that every citizen is able to donate whatever they choose to government. They don't have to wait to be taxed and they don't have a right to demand more from everybody else at all times. Thank you. Amanda Ledke. Mr. Ziaping Wu. Hi, uh, thank you for commissioners. Uh, thank you for everybody giving me this opportunity to make my speech and comment. Uh, my name is Xiaoping Wu. Uh, me and my wife uh, are living in Raleigh, North Carolina for 18 years. We love this place, we love this state, we love this city uh, because the tax is lower, property uh, uh, price is uh, reasonable, affordable. Uh, if we think about uh, back to seven to 10 years ago when the uh, uh, financial crisis, a lot of people, they cannot afford the tax of the property. And the real estate market was very low and terrible. And now, if we increase the property tax again, this situation may happen again. This will be bad to the state and the city of Raleigh. Uh, I uh, agree to support education, support the teacher, improve the uh, service, for the education system, uh, but I disagree the payments from the homeowner only because the responsibility is for everybody, not only for homeowner. Uh, my support, my proposal is that if it is necessary to increase 10% to get enough budget how about that we increase the sales tax? This will give everybody opportunity to make them contribution to improve the system. Thank you. Amanda Ledke. Carol Sass. Good evening. I represent a group that, there were a few people here in my age bracket. My husband is in his 80s, I'm in my 70s. Every year, things go up. Our medical expenses go up. Our house maintenance goes up. Our house of worship goes up. Everything goes up except what? Social security? No. Pensions? No. So every year, we have to decide what are we not going to be able to do this year? What? Premium channels? No. I mean, there's a lot of things that we just don't do. I recognize schools are important. Taxes are inevitable. If I thought this was the last tax increase that we would do, I would say, okay, let's just do it. But my taxes have doubled since I bought my home, or almost. And they continue to go up. And there has got to be a time when we stop and say, where is that money being spent? Are we sure? that we couldn't do a better job of managing our schools without hitting the taxpayers year after year after year. Our pockets are not bottomless. 
And there's a lot of people in Wake County who are in our boat that are elderly, they're on fixed incomes, and they simply can't afford increases in taxes. Thank you. Madam Clerk, does this conclude the list of individuals that have signed up? As promised, every person that signed up to speak and address this board has been heard. We encourage you to continue the conversation. Please feel free to continue to contact us. All commissioners can be reached via email. Our email is commissioners at waitgov.com. We encourage you to continue to email us, to contact us via other methods, via phone. We wanna make sure that we continue to hear from you. We thank each of you for spending your evening with us and appreciate your passion on, regardless of which side that you're on, we appreciate your time and that you would use it to share with us. At this time, I will close the public hearing Thank you for joining us and good night.